Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Straight Outta Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Today we're back for episode number 6 of my 2000, or 1994, excuse me, playoffs playthrough. I got my two series mixed up. Got my 1994 playoffs playthrough with the Montreal Expos here, and we are ready for game 1 of the 1994 World Series against the Chicago White Sox. We are in technically Montreal, obviously not really because we're using a current day video game, but anyway, uh, we'll pretend we're in Montreal here for game one between the Chicago White Sox and the Montreal Expos, and we are ready for a good series. Now, I've already detailed how well the Expos played that season, 74 and 40, best record in baseball. The White Sox were not too far behind, they were actually six and a half games behind that pace with a 67 and 46 record at the time of the strike. They were led by the likes of the Hall of Famer Frank Thomas, future managers Ozzie Guillen and Robin Ventura, should be Hall of Famer Tim Range, Joey Cora, Julio Franco, guys like that. Pitching staff probably don't recognize as many of the names, guys like Jack McDowell, Dennis Cook, Wilson Alvarez, Scott Sanderson, but anyway, we can take a look. As you can see, the uh, teams are getting ready here with the pregame festivities, the on-field pregame festivities, and you will notice the Chicago White Sox, many of them rocking the stirrup socks. That is a favorite of many, I know. Not many guys in the Expos rock them, apparently, but anyway, we are ready to get into the lineups today, so you can see Darren Jackson, Ray Durham, Frank Thomas, Robin Ventura, Tim Raines, Michael Lavialier, uh, Ozzie Guillen, Lane Johnson, I think that was Lane Johnson, that's Lance Johnson, excuse me. Lane Johnson is a tackle in the NFL, I believe. But anyway, Pedro Martinez on the mound, fully rested here for Game 1 of this World Series. And we are ready to get things started. Top of the first 2-2 count to Darren Jackson. And he's going to hit this one back up the middle for a base hit. So the first base runner of the day for the White Sox is also their first batter. Good start against the young phenom, Pedro Martinez. Next batter is going to be, actually it's two batters later, Frank Thomas up now, the Hall of Famer. 3-2 count to him. And he's going to line this one just past the glove of the second baseman, Mike Lansing there. That's going to get into right field for a base hit. So two men on with one man out for the cleanup hitter for this White Sox team, and that is going to be Robin Ventura, the 2-2 count to Ventura. That's going to be strike three swinging on that cutter. Martinez gets Ventura to go down. Now the next batter is going to be Tim Raines, and the 3-1 count to Raines. That's ball four. Pedro misses on the outer half with the running fastball, so that's going to load the bases for the catcher, Mike Lavia, something or another. 2-2 count to him. That's going to be flown to deep right field. Larry Walker back towards the track at the wall. He's going to make the catch. And that will get Martinez out of the inning. So no runs come home, and the game remains scoreless. Heading into the bottom half of the first inning, where we will take a look at the Montreal Expo starting lineup. So a couple things of note. Mike Lansing gets in there. Usually we have Juan Bell facing off against right-handed pitchers. Well, we're going to give Lansing a start today. Bell had not been doing anything so far this postseason. And Jack McDowell is on the mound for the Chicago White Sox. 2-1 with a 4-4-4 ERA and 28 strikeouts in 26 and a third inning so far this postseason. Now, in real life, starting pitching was not the strength of this staff, as you can see here, because Wilfredo Cordero hits one to deep left field. That ball is back, and goodbye, home run. A solo shot for Wilfredo Cordero to get things started in the bottom of the first inning. The second batter McDowell faces is the first run he lets up. And take a look at uh, first base coach, or third base coach, Brad Wilkerson there. But back to the White Sox pitching staff. So, yeah, that was not the strength of their team. McDowell was actually, I believe, second in uh, team or starter ERA for them. Just behind Wilson Alvarez, McDowell had a 3-7-3. Alvarez only had a 3-4-5, and uh, yeah, definitely the strength of their team was scoring runs. I believe they scored, so yeah, they scored 633 runs in uh, just over 110 games or so. But anyway, now top of the second inning, Martinez starts to settle in here. That's the second straight strike cut for him. That's Lance Johnson going down. Now it's the pitcher, Jack McDowell up. McDowell with the count 2-2. Two and two. He's going to go down swinging, so Martinez strikes out the side there. Three straight strikeouts. For Pedro Martinez, now we're going to head to the bottom of the second inning. Darren Fletcher up the 2-1 count to him. Fletcher's going to line this one down the right field line. That's a fair ball, and it's going to get down into the gap. And that's going to be played by the right fielder. Throw into second base is not in time. And the catcher, Darren Fletcher, gets things going with a leadoff. There, a one-out double, I should say, in this inning. Sean Barry up next. He's going to ground that one in between the third and baseman and shortstop. Fletcher goes to third. He'll hold there. And it's going to be first and third with one man out now for the next batter. It's going to be Mike Lansing. The one-two count to Lansing. Barry on the move. That's ball two. Throw down to second is in time. And Barry is thrown out trying to steal second. So now it's a runner on third with two outs. Two-two count to Lansing. He's going to smoke this one to deep left field. This one is back. And that's going to be caught just in front of the warning track there for out number three. And McDowell gets out of the second. On to the top of the third after a leadoff double. Ray Durham up now. He's going to go down on the changeup. Dirty pitch right there from Pedro Martinez. Freezes Durham. So now one away for the next batter. It's going to be Frank Thomas, who's one for one today. Another 3-2 count to Thomas. And he's going to go down on the slider. Beautiful location right there from Martinez. 
A lot of confidence to throw a slider on 3-2, but when you're dealing with Frank Thomas, you got to play around with stuff like that. Next batter is Robin Ventura, and make that six straight strikeouts for Pedro Martinez. He is dialed in right now through three innings. We're into the bottom of the third. 3-2 counts to Wilfredo Cordero. McDowell the pitch. That's going to be an high and deep to left field. This ball is back and over the left fielder's head. That's going to one-hop up off the wall. Cordero rounding first, heading for two. He's in there safely. It's a wild throw, and Cordero takes a wide turnaround second, and he's picked off. A bit of a lucky bounce there from the White Sox as the man who fielded that one ended up running straight towards Cordero after he took that wide turn and Cordero was picked off of seconds. So we're going to skip to the top of the fifth here. That one hit high and deep to center field. Grissom, a poor play by Marquis Grissom and that is a result of my broken analog stick on my controller and you can see it's going to cost us because now the runner is going to come all the way around and he will score on the inside the park home run. I believe that was Darren Jackson, the leadoff man. So yeah, the analog stick on my controller. I only brought one controller home from school. I just forgot the other one. And this one, that left analog stick, doesn't fully work. It sort of, like, decides not to work sometimes. So I often have to play around with it to uh, keep my guy going. Like, usually if I try to hit up, as, as you probably noticed, Grissom was trying to uh, move up on that play, move deeper into center field, and it just doesn't work sometimes. So that's in trouble with that ball. And then Ray Durham, the next batter, Smokes one to right field. That one is into the bullpen and gone for a solo home run. So back-to-back -back home runs for the Chicago White Sox. That's going to make it a 2-1 to -one ball game. The White Sox now have taken the lead. Still top five here. Next batter is going to be Frank Thomas. Pedro already at 92 pitches, but Thomas goes down for the second time tonight on a 3-2 changeup there. Third 3-2 count to Thomas. And Martinez again. I believe that's his like eighth strikeout of the night. But Darren Fletcher up now to lead things off in the bottom of the fifth. That one smoked to right field. And that's over the right fielder's head for a base hit. And that one's going to roll all the way to the wall. Right fielder having some trouble with it. Fletcher, not the fleetest of foot, on his way to third. And he's in there with a the leadoff trouble to get things going here in the bottom of the fifth inning. So a big play there. Ozzie Guillen, I believe. that Actually, that was Darren Jackson in the right field with some trouble there. And Sean Barry, the next batter, is going to walk on five pitches. So that's going to be first and third with no one out for Rondell White. We're going to pinch it. Rondell White with Martinez, who was at 96 pitches, I believe, through five innings. So he's done. White to deep right center field. This ball is back, and that's going to one-hop up off the wall. Both runs are going to come around and score as Barry was moving on the pitch, and it's a pinch hit, two RBI double for Rondell White, who gives the Expos the lead again. 3-2 to two now is the score. The next batter is going to be back to the top of the lineup. Marquise Grissom, 1-2 count. Grissom smokes one to deep left field. This ball is back, and goodbye. Home run, a two-run shot for Marquise Grissom, and the lead is now 5-2. to two. A four-run outburst from the Expos in this inning. They finally get to Jack McDowell, and it's a big one. 5-2 to two now the score, a three-run lead for Martinez. Or I should say three-run lead for the bullpen now as Martinez is out of this game. But nonetheless, a huge hit. By Marquise Grissom, a huge ending for this team as we now have a 5-2 lead. Grissom touches them all, and now still bottom of the fifth inning, 2-2 count. Jack McDowell still on the mound. Moises Alou up now, and Alou is going to take this curveball. Questionable call by the home plate umpire there. Alou disagrees, but nonetheless, it's strike three. So Kirk Reuter, the former starter, he was our number five starter. He was the Expos' number five starter in uh, real life this season, demoted to the bullpen for the playoffs. He gets into some trouble here in the sixth inning, but we're going to get out of it. Julio Franco, the pinch hitter who pinch hit for McDowell at this point, is going to ground out to the second baseman. So we're through six innings, 5-2 to two lead for the Nationals. White Sox actually out hitting them 8-7. to seven. You can see Martinez's night, eight strikeouts, six hits, two in runs and a walk through five innings. Uga Thurbina is going to come on now to pitch the seventh. And now with two outs in the inning, Frank Thomas up the 2-2 two -two count. And Thomas is going to ground this one softly to the second baseman, lancing on the backhand, throw to first in time. And Ugrith Urbina is through the seventh, so now we're six outs away from clinching game one of the World Series. Carlos Perez is going to come on now. We had a couple guys who were uh, a lot better against right-handed pitching than left-handed pitching coming up, so I decided to go with Perez to start the eighth instead of Tim Scott. And you can see Ventura actually gets on base there with a leadoff single. Next batter is going to be Tim Raines, 3-2 count. Raines, the switch hitter, who bats much better from the left side of the plate, ends up walking there. So that's two men on with no men out, and we're going to immediately pull Perez. The Perez experiment did not work, so we're going to go back to Tim Scott here. 2-2 count to the next batter. That's going to be roped down the left field line. Fair ball, and that's going to get all the way into the corner. One run is going to come around and score. Now they're waving around Raines. The play at the plate is not in time, and Tim Raines scores. It's a two RBI double, and the White Sox have cut the lead down to one. So we're going to go to John Wetland now for the five-out save after a sack fly and an intentional walk. Runner going for second. That's strike three. Runner is safe now, so two away with runners on second and third. Next batter is going to be Darren Jackson back to the top of the lineup. 2-2 two -two count, or 1-2 count. That one's grounded to the second baseman, Lansing on the first in time, and that will get the Expos out of the inning. So Lansing, or uh, Wetland, I should say, has already given us two outs. 
We're on to the bottom of the eighth now. 1-1 one, one count to Marquise Grissom. Already with one home run today. Here is the windup in the pitch. And that one's going to be roped and stabbed by the shortstop, Guillen. He will plant and fire to first, but not in time. Grissom is on with a, I think, a leadoff single now. Here's Wilfredo Cordero, the 3-0 count. Grissom on the move. He actually swings at that one, but Grissom is safe at second. That could have been ball four. Cordero does offer around that. Now it's a 3-2 count. Grissom still at second with no one out. And Cordero is going to again swing at ball four. But this time there's going to be some confusion on the play. The catcher tries to throw it to third there as Grissom looked like he was breaking for third, but he goes back and the throw goes to first, not in time. Everyone is safe. Now a 3-2 count for Moises Alou. Both runners moving on the pitch. That's a base hit in the left field. One run's going to score, and it's an RBI single for Moises Alou. That makes the lead 6-4 to four Expos. Now the next batter is going to be Larry Walker. But first we have a pitching change. Paul Ossenmacher is on now. With uh, one out in the inning, Cliff Lloyd up after Larry Walker struck out. That's hitting the right field for a base hit. Runner on the move again. It's a hit and run. So he's going to get all the way to third base. That's Alou. Floyd knocks it a run, and it's 7-4 Expo. So Larry Webster up now. He had previously come into the game for Darren Fletcher to pinch hit. And this time, Alou's going to get picked off here. He gets caught in a rundown. And, again, my fault with the base running controls in this game. A little too confusing for uh, my liking. But, anyway, Alou gets thrown out. So still a 7-4 game now with two men on, two men out. 3-2 count, runners are going to be moving on the pitch. Barry now is going to fly one to right field. This time, Darren Jackson's going to have no trouble. He will get right under it and make the play. So John Love Wetland ended up getting the first out in the top of the ninth inning. We then went to Mel Rojas. I didn't want to burn Wetland too much because he'd already thrown like 15, 16 pitches. So he actually lets a run in at this point and got a couple more guys on. But Rojas gets out of the inning either way, and he ends up shutting the door with a 7-5 victory. So Rojas did allow a run, but because we're already at like 11 minutes into this video, I didn't want to extend it too, too much further. So yeah, that's the story with that. Rojas gets the save. We win game 1, 7-5, and we now lead the series 1-0. Game, whatever the next elimination game is going to be, will be out tomorrow. Hope you guys did enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I'm out.